If you are a veteran or active military home buyer in California, thank you so much for your service. I wanna be able to provide you with some value. There are so many misconceptions and misinformation about VA loans. I wanna arm you with the right information to make you as competitive of a buyer as possible. Let's get started. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Erica Monroe, I'm a realtor in the Bay Area and I specialize in Solano County. I have had the pleasure and honor of working with some of the most amazing veteran families. And what I've learned in my experience is that there's a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding about VA loans. Even if we don't have the opportunity to work together, I wanna to provide you with this value. This is specific to California, so if you reside in another state, make sure to check with your agent or your favorite lender. Number one, not having to put any money down when purchasing a house. It is near impossible in this market to get your offer accepted if you don't put an earnest deposit or good faith deposit into escrow. That's really the only way to assure a seller that you are serious about purchasing their home and that you are gonna abide by the timelines in the contract. The earnest deposit, if you remember, is the money you put up that you'd potentially jeopardize if you default on the contract. A seller will want that peace of mind that you are actually going to follow through with your obligations. And if you don't have an earnest deposit, you may be able to walk away unscathed with no penalty, and that doesn't give the seller much comfort. It's also important to check with your lender about closing costs. Closing costs are miscellaneous costs such as lender fees, title insurance, your first month's mortgage, prepaid taxes, all can equate to about 2% of the purchase price. Again, it varies with your lender and probably the location that you're in. Most lenders will not wrap your closing costs into the loan. So that is actual cash that you need readily available when purchasing a house. So if you have a $600,000 house as an example, the closing costs may be around $12,000. That's a significant amount of money and you need to be prepared to have that on hand. Now I do want to point out that your closing costs don't have to be a separate fund from your earnest deposit. So you could potentially use the money you have set for your closing costs and place that into escrow as your earnest deposit. In California, specifically around Solano County, we often see about two to 3% of the purchase price as the earnest deposit amount that's competitive. There's no standard, so you can put down whatever you feel comfortable, but in order to be competitive, it's generally hovering around two to 3%. So that money is interchangeable. It's not an additional amount that you have to have at closing your earnest deposit funds will go towards your closing costs. Now, some lenders will have loan programs that allow you to roll your closing costs into your loan, but keep in mind, you're probably gonna be jeopardizing your interest rate. One of the best benefits of VA loans is that VA buyers have the best interest rate. It's lower than FHA and it's lower than conventional loans. However, if you borrow more than 100% of the value of the home, so if you borrow enough to cover your closing costs, your interest rate is gonna skyrocket. So in order for you to take advantage of your benefit, I would encourage you to keep in mind that closing costs should come as cash out of pocket to maintain the lowest possible interest rate. Misconception number two is that a buyer must have all of section one and two work cleared from a pest report. When you purchase a house, you have a pest inspector come out and look for items like dry rot or termite damage or wood destroying beetles. The inspector will generate a report that'll include section one, which are items that they deem most important to fix now, section two, section three, and so on. Old VA guidelines require section one and two to be fully cured, so all the repairs done prior to closing. This has in the past made VA buyers not as competitive because often it's the seller that is required to pay for the work and sellers are trying to keep as much money as possible. So compared to a conventional or FHA buyer who doesn't have that requirement, it kind of set VA buyers back as not as competitive. Well, you don't actually have to clear section one or two. You have to clear any active infestation of termites or wood destroying beetles, etc. 
that work does have to be completed and you would probably have to negotiate that with the seller. But upfront in advance, you can explain to the seller that it's not gonna require a full clearance of section one and two. Now, not all lenders abide by this. These are newer guidelines. And if your lender still requires it, I would encourage you to find a lender that'll abide by the newer guidelines. There's a specific form that the inspector can fill out and send to the lender. And that'll be enough reassurance to the lender that the home is in sound condition. Misconception number three, buyers can't pay for their own pest inspection. Well, in California, they can. California is one of nine states in the U.S. that allows buyers to select their own pest inspector and pay for the inspection. That's another bonus when you're in a competitive market like today. That's one less item the seller has to pay for out of pocket. So again, makes you as competitive in that respect as a conventional or FHA buyer. If your lender's confused about this and needs help, Tell them to check out this link here. It's clearly stated that in California, a buyer may purchase their own pest inspection. Misconception number four, VA loans take forever to close. That's incorrect. Some of the larger national banks or lenders may abide by their own timelines. They may quote 30 to 45 days for closing, which again, in California, that's not gonna cut it. That's not gonna keep you as a competitive buyer. If you find a local lender who's a direct VA lender that understands all the new guidelines and understands our local timelines, you should be able to close within a 21 day timeframe. Now there are exceptions, of course, VA have their own appraisals, and if the appraiser is running behind, that can set back closing. But you should be able to competitively compete with conventional and FHA buyers who are able to close in a 21 day timeframe. There's a lot of terminology that got thrown at you today in this video. If you're confused and need a refresher on what a closing timeline may look like or what your responsibilities are as a buyer, check out these videos above to help educate yourself. I wanna make you as competitive and as knowledgeable of a buyer as possible. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.